Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Derek Young. And we continue an offense watch at K-State, whatever you want yeah. it to be. There's a lot of questions going on there. Who's going to be the offensive coordinator? Is Avery Johnson going to stay or is he going to go after the Colin Klein stuff? Everything is in disarray right now uh, in terms of how it looks publicly with K-State football. But it seems like things might be starting to calm down a little bit. And there is some some clearly defined outcomes or, you know, paths to get to outcomes on the horizon yeah but by the way i, I wanted to start off with this because i kind of i think i tweeted this out yesterday and i also had the conversation in person with some other people has there ever been a time where you have two stories of this magnitude unfolding simultaneously because you got to think not just what we're about to t talk about with colin klein's exit from kansas state but obviously how nick wantama was just dismissed from the team and the public spectacle that that became in the hours leading up to it. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, this truly is a situation where, like, K-State athletics for years to come could be, m m like, made or broken for what this week is at K-State with, you know, the basketball situation. If it leads to some more negative outcomes down the, the long run and you, you'll we'll, we'll lose Jerome Tang in worst-case scenario, that's not great. And then, obviously – Everybody, you know, it sucks to lose Colin Klein in this situation, but you don't want to get the double whammy and just completely fall out if you lose Avery Johnson. It's like when you're you're in school and, you know, you get a really bad grade on a test, but it's like, hey, you just got to go out and get like a 60 on the final. Like that that's fine. So you've had the you've had the bad grade already with Colin Klein leaving. Now it's just don't go out there and flunk the final and, and you'll be fine. Just hit that benchmark and you're good of keeping every Johnson and everything uh, yep. kind of stays in order there. So I guess let, let's start with this. I mean, Avery Johnson is probably the, the number one thing on people's minds. Uh, what is the the impact and where are things looking right now for Avery Johnson in Kansas State? Yeah, there's a lot of like moving parts here, right? With the, the transfer portal is open. So your players can enter it and you still have to recruit it to backfill it and, you know, supplement the, the, the missing pieces of your own roster. Hard to do that without an offensive coordinator. So then you go to the offensive coordinator. I, I don't know if there's a, necessarily a decision that has been made yet. So uh, I hear one thing, I hear another. So I think there's still some inconsistency. So I, I think they're still trying to reach that conclusion. It feels like of what they want that to look like. You have to get a quarterback coach, even if you do hire an offensive coordinator that isn't a quarterback's coach, or, or right? So that's part of the process. And none of that seems clear. There's no, regardless of who you talk to from source to source to source, you, you kind of get different answers as to what the plan might be. Um, obviously, Chris Kleiman is what the plan is. Uh, maybe not many other people do, and that's why – you're getting these inconsistent answers. So it'll be interesting how that unfolds. Why I let off with all of that when speaking about Avery Johnson is the only consistent message I have gotten about what's going to happen after Colin Klein has already been announced as the new offensive coordinator at Texas A&M is that Avery Johnson wants to stay. So I think if I'm confident about anything, and obviously, even being confident about this, it can still change in two hours. College football, college athletics is nothing if not volatile right now because of NIL, transfer portal, all the, the dramas that are associated with the sport now don't really make for 100% certainties. But the only thing that people seem to agree on at this point is that Avery, Avery Johnson intends to stay at Kansas State. Well, that's that's music to a lot of people's ears out there. And, I, you know, the number one thing is here, we knew that the decision that would be made ultimately, it, it's going to result in either an offensive coordinator or, or a quarterback's coach that Avery Johnson likes and trusts and feels good about what he can do to keep, continue to develop him and get him to the next level. I mean, that's the goal. When you're a talent, the level of Avery Johnson, you want somebody that can get you to a higher level. And obviously he thought that Colin Klein could do that. A lot of belief there. And we know that that's going to be the path that K-State goes with one of the coaching decisions. Now, the big one that is then out there is what does K-State do 
as they look for an offensive coordinator and, and what is some of the the early consensus on I mean, I know that you, you threw out a couple names yesterday that maybe, you, you know, that was still even, we didn't even know who they had looked at. It was just, this could be an option. Where do things stand for K-State right now? And, you know, also you've got bowl practices and a bowl game to play in exactly three weeks from today uh, to, to decide who's going to call plays in that game. I think that Connor Riley is a candidate that they are seriously looking at. I don't know enough to say that he will be the guy, and I believe others are being looked at as well. We do have a, some of that information on the message board at K-State Online. So I think there's external candidates being examined. I think Connor Riley is being examined. And because he is the internal candidate that's getting that opportunity, I imagine that he's at least going to be the interim offensive coordinator for the bowl game. That would be my guess. And maybe it's a scenario where you say, this is your trial run, much like what you do with Colin Klein in the Texas Bowl against a, de a depleted LSU team. So I think if I was going to handicap it, that's what I would say. Connor Riley's going to get a shot or is at least being um, considered and that the bowl game, bowl game could be his interview. Yeah, well, and and so Connor Riley is the the internal option that would be out there. I mean, Connor Riley, offensive line coach since Chris Kleiman got here, has been a good recruiter for the Wildcats. Has done some good things for him. Where, not saying that he will be or won't be, but where would your confidence lie if Connor Riley was the next offensive coordinator at K State? I would just say it's not. I don't know because I'm not going to judge the man and say he's going to be a bad offensive coordinator before he's ever an offensive coordinator. That's not fair. I would just say it's not really a sexy hire. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm with you. Look, I. I think Connor Riley is a, a good coach, a, a good guy, but I just you know I think people have a little bit of concern when an offensive line coach moves in that spot. You want a guy like it made sense that Colin Klein was your offensive coordinator. He. He was a quarterback. He commanded an offense. Like he totally gets it. And Con Connor Riley obviously understands football to a certain mm -hmm. extent. It's just, does he have the field? Does he have what you're looking for? And that's something that he can go out and prove. And look, we, we don't know one way or the other if he does or doesn't have it. Uh, and, and that will kind of be a fun thing to see, I guess, play out uh, if he gets the opportunity in the Pop-Tarts Bowl. So we'll see how it uh, goes down there. And K-State obviously searching for the OC and then a quarterback's coach. Uh, to to at least make it a situation where you, number one, don't lose Avery Johnson, but also you hang on to other guys. Because one of the things that Colin Klein had done over the last two years for K-State was make this an offense more attractive to playmakers at the position of wide receiver and some of the other spots on the field. Is, is there any concern about keeping other players right now for K-State on offense with the departure of Colin Klein? Or is that maybe more tied to what Avery Johnson's decision ends up being? I would, I would assume it's probably tied to their own position coaches uh, as well um, is something to consider. Uh, my – I don't know this, but my speculation, my assumptions based on how these things tend to work is that if you can keep Avery Johnson, I'm sure he, that you can use that for you. You, can, you have him working for you then at that point to kind of help uh, galvanize the rest of the roster, at least on the offensive side of the ball. So I I don't know, but you would think that Avery Johnson kind of does a lot of the work for you. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But as of now, it seems like everything's in a decent spot for K-State. And like you, you let off with saying that, you know, you feel like Avery Johnson's preference would be to stay at K-State and it's it's not wrong of him to want to make sure that they get a the right person in here to help give him the best opportunity because it's not just about what he can accomplish at K-State in terms of like obviously NIL is a big opportunity for him here being the local guy staying close to home. The ultimate goal here still for Avery Johnson is to get coached up and put in a position to succeed to where the next level is a, a realistic opportunity and he can max out his value there. And at the end of the day, football has to come first in that decision. You got to make sure that it's going to work out for you. 
The one thing throughout this entire process that I, I have been confident in and will continue to be confident in is that Chris Kleiman and the staff will do everything they can to make sure that happens. But like you said, college football, it changes minute to minute, and you can feel good about what you have lined up. And then next thing you know, oh, this guy's been taken elsewhere, or that's not going to happen because of you know X, Y, and Z. I'm sure Notre Dame last year felt like, okay, Colin Klein, we got our guy. This is awesome. No way that this doesn't you know go our way. And then it's like, oh, no, he's staying at K-State. You're going to have to figure that out and deal with it. Um, I think about Chris Kleiman's first year, totally different scenario, but he he hired a defensive coordinator that was only here like two weeks and then went and you know joined the Bears staff. And so then he had to go back to Scotty Hazeltoon, who I think was the preference before they even hired Ted Monachino. Uh, so it can be a, a fickle thing, but right now it does seem like football is calming the waters a lot better than uh, what the basketball situation is right now at K-State. Yeah, I would agree. My – my only, I don't say hesitation, concern, worry. I don't know if those are the right words, but things to, you know, take into account here is how do you recruit the transfer portal without a permanent or locked in offensive coordinator? Like if you were going to make this a trial run for Connor Riley in this day and age when the transfer portal is open, um, can you afford to do that? Like, I need to confirm this, but we talked about the vis. They have some visitors from the transfer portal that were slated to come in this weekend and the following one. Now, as long as their position coaches around, maybe there's not necessarily much of a conversation that has to happen. But I just wonder how that works. If those are still valid, they probably are. I haven't heard otherwise. But and then you got to think. How quickly do you say this guy is our quarterback coach? Because you kind of have a quarterback depth problem right now because the only two on your roster are Avery Johnson and then Jacob Knuth, who they're hopeful gets a waiver to be able to play in the bowl game. But those are the only two going into next year besides the guy that's committed right now who's no commenting because he doesn't know his quarterback coach is going to yeah. be. Yeah, it's the – there are still some things to get sorted out. And this is, I mean, this is where it's a tough time of the year for obviously the coaching changes have to take place. Now seasons have ended for teams and you want to be set up for next year. And you, you have to have these guys in position to recruit, keep high school classes together, work the transfer portal. But on the other side of that, it's also terrible because teams are left without coaches this time of the year and they're having to scramble to find guys. So uh, this is probably more uh, uh, an NCAA calendar problem in terms of how you work this out, but I really don't know the best way to do it because, you know, these guys want to get to work. They want to be able to, to put things in place moving forward. So it's going to be uh, an interesting time, but it seems like K-State football is doing the best they can with it right now. And I think they're in position to provide a pretty positive outcome given what is a not-so-fun situation in losing Colin Klein. They're making the most out of the very little they have, or at least trying to. But there are some there there are some hurdles that are going to be difficult to navigate. Not saying they won't, but you know, going through this time right now without an offensive coordinator, you know, having the quarterback stuff go on. When, when do you need your quarterback? Uh, yeah. There's still there's still some needles to really thread right now that they probably will thread. Um, the timing of how all of this is going to unfold is interesting um, because I also think there there's some things that are going to happen, like maybe with the transfer portal probably isn't over. So mm-hmm. a lot of moving parts still. Yep, a lot to uh, get into, and you can follow along with everything with K-State Online. You can follow us there on Twitter. You can also be sure to continue to stay locked in to the YouTube page where you're watching this right now, also the podcast platforms. And the number one spot to go for K-State information and conversation is kstateonline.com. So just head over to On3. You can find us there. Obviously, if you're already a part of K-State Online, that's a great deal. You know what we're talking about. And if you're not, it's a good time to get fired up there because 
Uh, I think just what last week or two weeks ago, we we're talking about like, oh, you know, K State's not really involved in silly season. They're, you know, they're they're losing some guys to the portal, but everything else is fine. No, uh, it has been cranked up to the yeah. back right now that, with that, that, basketball that, and football. <laughs> that's a good call. We're like, oh, we're doing the silly season sale, which there was going to be some silliness to it with the transfer mm-hmm. portal because that was always going to happen. We're like, we're, Kansas State's probably going to be one of the lesser sillier teams. Now, I'm not so sure Kansas State's the most silliest. Yeah, it's certainly, uh, out of all the schools in America, the K-State Athletic Department <laughs> has a lot on its plate right now, and uh, we'll just see if they can manage it all in a, in a halfway decent manner to try and uh, patch it all together. But that will do it for us. For Derek Young, I am Mason Vo. Thank you for watching and listening to K-State